I want to build a picture of why those who remain loathed with an unsleeping hatred, the Sasnuk, who they blamed as the sole agents of their many self-inflicted misfortunes. We were the settlers they blamed for leaving the mountainy men bereft of the rights they had long enjoyed to graze the hills. Truly, our privilege, privileges were dearly bought. They could not see that their existence there had brought nothing but harm and that the landlord had expended greatly in assisting their passage to better welfare in other countries. Hubert had demanded the clearance from the hill farms of all remaining tenants to allow him to have vacant possession of the farm. The landlord easily consented, since famine and emigration had already assisted him in clearing most of the people. It was easier to gather the income from the sale of sheep than to collect rent from ungrateful peasants. There's just a few scattered tenants left and I'll clear the lot, the landlord had said when Hubert approached him about a lease. It was only later I became aware that a few amounted to 80 families and 670 people. He succeeded in his ambition to acquire a farm capable of running 20,000 sheep, but he had also inherited a festering sore of resentment. Although the new manager had taken steps, they knew too well the former occupiers were still stealing sheep from the hills. I was at first perturbed by the many wretched cabins from which they had removed thatch to avail of the roof timbers. It is a desolate sight, and on arrival I resolved to have them flattened and thus remove such sadly eloquent reminders of the peasant's vision. Now I have grown accustomed to the sight and find there are many more painful reminders that, be that became my lot to witness at close quarters. During the greater part of the winter, Homeless and half-naked wanderers besieged our residence. They were the former tenants who were moved beyond the boundaries of the district when the landlord cleared the area of our sheep farm. Since I was vaguely conscious that we had no small share in making an unpleasant situation worse, I tried to assist. Alas, I felt helpless, apart from giving the bit and sup they requested, and this added to the pain their visits inflicted upon me. Neither would they entertain my pleas to spend the shortest sojourn in the poorhouse. Death to one and all was preferable to imprisonment within the ugly walls of that building in Westport Town. Many used what little they had put aside for the voyage to America, but some were sent away at the landlord's expense from the poor land on which they had foolishly lavished their love. Left behind, among those who stayed, is a well of resentment as deep and dark as the black lake I look out upon each blessed day. I believe we will drink from that well, one spoon at a time, for as long as we stay in the West. <laughs>